<laughs> awesome. Sweet. Okay. Thank you so much. We're in Kensington Market in Toronto, and we're going to check out Samara Contemporary Gallery. So let's go in and check it out. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Cabin Boy Knits. We are inside a gallery, the Samara Gallery in Kensington Market, and I'm so excited and I'm really, really excited for this interview, uh, especially because you know, a couple years ago I bought um, a piece at uh, a show and I was just so excited I had to find out who made it. And so today with me, I'm, I feel so fortunate uh, to be with uh, Chesson. And so well, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, yeah, hi, I'm Shasan Luboa, and I am a crochet artist, and I think more recently I've been saying that I'm a crochet sculptor, and I like to make dolls, and they're basically these um, nude, anatomically correct crochet dolls that I make, and they're representative of all different kinds of bodies, different skin tones, and I guess some of the dolls that you might find in my collection are... Uh, representative of mastectomy survivors, we've got trans and intersex representation, we've got very dark skin tones, everything from acne and back knee to pubes is just representative of yep. all different body types. Yeah. And, and so how did you get there? How did, well, let's start off with how did you start crocheting? Firstly? Well, I started crocheting about eight years or nine years ago. And um, basically, I needed to be warm in the winter, <laughs> and I needed to not spend money. So I had a friend who crocheted, and they basically taught me the basics, and I went home and taught myself on YouTube, and um, it was too hard. <laughs> so I put it down for many months, yeah. and that was about uh, in August. And then when November rolled around, I'm like, I should try this again. <laughs> so I really sat down, buckled down, and I loved it. Yeah. Um, and then I suffered a trauma and it really came in handy as more of a meditative thing. Sure. And I started crocheting to heal. And when that started, that's when I realized like, okay, I'm pretty passionate about this. This is something that's, that changed me and the way that I think. And I kind of wanted to just bring that out to the world and awesome. like show people how much it changed me. And we're the benefactors now, so thank you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and, and so why do you think you went down the crochet road and not the knitting road or the needlepoint road? Or what was it about crochet that really attracted you? I just loved the repetition and the instant gratification. Yeah. Like you, even if you don't know what you're doing in crochet, you still get like some kind of a form and the movements were just, I don't know, something about knitting, I'm like, oh, there's two needles. <laughs> like, <laughs> Like, I'm gonna lose one, you know? I'm like, yes. okay, I have to, As one does. Yeah, I lose everything. So, like, I got, I have just one hook and just this one movement that just satisfied me so much. It was like endorphins. Yeah. Yeah, the repetition yep. just gave me this rush of endorphins that I just loved so much. Yeah. Well, and then the muscle memory kicks in too, and exactly. you're just, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. That's great. And so, you were talking about. You, you defined it as sculpturing. What, why do you say sculpturing? Where, where does that aspect come in? I think really similar to like ceramics or you know when you're chiseling something, when you see like a form, yeah, like a 3D form happening right before your eyes, it just feels like you're sculpting. <laughs> Honestly, yeah, like, I, I get that. There's like a nice. Um, when I crochet, they're really tight stitches, so they, um, before I stuff them, they've already taken shape. And so it stands up and it's like very firm and it just feels more like a sculpture than anything else to me. Yeah. Like they're still cuddly and approachable because they're made of soft material, but they can also just be used as like a sure. statue, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 
And so when you think about all the things in the world you could crochet, <laughs> and you're, you're focused on a particular area. Yeah. And so what attracted you to that? For me, it was pretty personal. Like, I started crocheting black dolls first. Mm -hmm. So I grew up in a community that was like very Afro and Caribbean centric, you know? There was like a ton of people that just looked like me who were black. And where was that? Um, I grew up in Etobicoke, so okay. I grew up in North Etobicoke. Oh, hail up Capri Road. Um, and we were just like Jamaicans, Ghanaians, Trinidadians, just like all of us, Somalis, just like in a building. But all the children had white dolls. And I'm just like, this is very bizarre. <laughs> this is just so weird. And even I, when I was growing up, like I, I had a few black dolls, but they all still had very Eurocentric features. Like they had straight hair and I would find myself constantly braiding my Barbie's hair so yeah. that I can unravel it so it would look like mine, right? And the next day and just like cutting it shorter and like doing weird things to my doll to make it look like me instead of just that being uh, available for me, right? Yeah. Um, so when I started crocheting and figuring out, like, I found out, oh, I really like making 3D figures, um, what am I going to do? So I made black dolls and I just sort of like gave them out to the children in my community. I'm, I'm an early childhood educator as well, so yep. I'm, like, I love kids and I'm sort of a preacher. <laughs> so I'm like, take this doll, <laughs> this is for you, <laughs> you know? Um, but then I got bored, like, you know, they were very, like... Um, they weren't detailed, you know, sure. they were like teddy bears, right? Yeah. And one day I was making a doll in my room and I'm like, she should have some titties. <laughs> I'm like, you should just be a woman. Like, how would sure. you know, right? I'm like, let me give her some features that, um, to me, like, would represent, like, just like a mother, yeah. right? So I made, the first doll I ever made had, like, one small boob, one really big boob, and, like, a lot of pubic hair, and I'm like, Okay, I'm like, this is it. This is what I'm gonna do. And it just, from there. Awesome. Yeah. And, and so you take your crocheting and you've, you know, it's one thing to, to knit or crochet, crochet That's dolls. Right. <laughs> um, it's another to know to be in a space, in a gallery. Yeah. And so how did that transition work? Honestly, um, well, to be honest, okay, so I am the type of person that takes my crochet everywhere yes. with me. So one day I was on a patio and I was actually just up the street from here at Amadeus and I was crocheting this doll and this man came up to me and was like, I do an art fair. <laughs> Rafi, my friend Rafi Ganagunian, he's actually the owner of this, um, of this gallery and he was like, uh, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm making a doll. He's like, you should be in the art fair. And before then, my idea was like, I'm going to make money from crocheting because I do this well and so I'm going to sell hats and scarves and da 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 da. And it wasn't fulfilling to me at all. So I, I decided to give this a try. And I was pretty skeptical because I'm like, people are going to think I'm a weirdo. <laughs> like, people are just going to think I'm like a voodoo priestess. <laughs> We're just like, doesn't want to, you know, like who's just out here like putting nudity out there. But I gave it a shot and there were mixed reviews. But for the most part, the things that were positive to me were yeah. so worth it. Yeah. You know, I'm like, I'm, I'm understanding that this is a necessity. And so I aimed to make it something that could be accessible to everybody even if they couldn't pay for it you know they could still come into a space and see it and yeah. see themselves and identify with that so the gallery movement just made sense for me right? yeah I'm absolutely like, oh, i want to exhibit this stuff <laughs> yeah. you know yeah but well, what i find uh, what i find amazing is that we grow okay so growing up in etobicoke there's this overlay in canada of a puritan aspect and so when you say you know people Think that you're crazy yeah. showing you where you felt you feel like talking to you, you feel completely comfortable. It doesn't seem like there's any filters on yeah. um, in terms of talking about that. And, and where does that come from? I think that just comes from my own personal journey. Like, I grew up in a very um we were conservative and not conservative. Like my mom walks around the house naked. Yeah. But then she's like, go to church. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, cool. Like you seem to have different views for different things, right? And yeah. I find that like we still do come from a very conservative place. Like Toronto is very conservative in a mm -hmm. lot of a lot of ways. Yeah. Um and so I 
was rebelling in my own little way, I guess. Like, I'm like, I'm very comfortable with my body. And in the summertime, like, ask all my friends, I'm just naked out there. <laughs> like, I'm like, I don't see anything wrong with it. And I know we had another connection. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, it's our bodies. Yeah. I think it's the one thing that's, that we know for sure is that we all have bodies and they're all different, but we have bodies. And so I kind of wanted to just remove the shame from nudity. You know, like we have so much to be ashamed of already, you know, ashamed, whatever that is sure. for each person. Right. Um, and it seems that like something that we shouldn't be ashamed of is one of the biggest things that like, people are telling us to be ashamed of. Yeah. Right? It's weird. <laughs> <laughs> so I think I've just been trying to like, um, you know, very bluntly say like, hey, you know, some people have penises, some people have breasts, some people have both, some people have none, like, you know, yep. <laughs> and that's okay, and like, I have one boob that's bigger than the other, and that's cool, <laughs> you know, and like, people shave, they don't, it's okay, they yeah. just have bodies, you know? Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, when, when I picked up, when I bought the doll, I was looking at, and I was, it didn't, it took me a while to figure out why I was so, why I love this doll so much. Yeah. And, and I think part of it was the fact that, you know, something that just clicked today was just the fact that, you know, the freedom of, of being able to express yourself and whatnot, it is fantastic. So do you play with your dolls? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> can we play with some of your dolls yes, now? Yes, we, we can. can. We talk about some okay, of them? yeah, for sure. <laughs> okay. So this doll is, um, I don't give my dolls names because if I do, then I'll be sad when they go away. So this guy <laughs> is actually someone that I made for her because this was like the first mother piece I ever made. And wow. when oh, I say, goodness. thank you, when I say mother piece, I just mean I make these dolls, the ones that are multicolored, I like to say that they're representative of more than just one person. Yep. So That's they're the mother, you know? And then this was her son, and so then they just sort of like do a lot of like oh, frolicking and loving, <laughs> and they just cuddle. And then sometimes he's like, Mom, I need my space. And she's like, But I raised you. You know, it's like that. Oh, <laughs> and I love playing with dolls because I think like one thing that dolls really do is. When you start playing, like this is why like a lot of children or we really do promote that children learn through play. Yeah. Because they a lot of the things that they think and the things that they're experiencing are portrayed through their play. Sure. And it can have like we need to do that as adults as well. Whatever play looks like for us. And so when I finish making dolls, I'm like, I kind of just like spew it all out there. <laughs> I'm just like <laughs> you know, I, I do like I do talk about what I'm going through when I'm playing. Sure. Like, me and my friends get together and some of them have my dolls and I usually have a doll in my bag and we play. That's awesome. Know? Well, yeah, when we, when we met for coffee, you pulled one out of your purse as well. That was awesome. Yeah. That was great. <laughs> so how long does it take to make a doll? Um, well, for a regular sized doll, someone like this guy would take anywhere from like one to three days. Mm -hmm. And someone like her would be anywhere from three to a week. Sure. And then, you know, someone like her I worked on for like eight months. So And is it freestyle? Like you're not yeah. afraid? There's no I I have like a basic pattern in my head and then yeah. as the doll progresses, I'm like, Wow, you're gonna have this body now. <laughs> you know, like this is the body that you're about to have. So it's it's freestyle and Oh look at the back too. Jeez. Yeah, it's got a little bum. <laughs> That's fantastic. It's cool about the bums because like you can go deep in there. You can actually like put your finger in wow. it. Wow. Yeah. I love it. Fantastic. <laughs> and who else do we have? Who else do we have? Oh, we have this um, so double amputee trans representation mm -hmm. with amazing braids. Also, oh, the braids are great. Thank you. She she loves them too. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it because um, my friend when my best when we were growing up she hated her beauty marks. Like she would use creams to like erase them and yeah. I would like, no, they're so that's why they're called beauty marks. <laughs> so I gave her like a bunch on her legs and a flat bum. Sometimes it's like that. Yeah. You know? yeah. And she's definitely one of my favorites. She's just like thick and juicy. That's great. Thank you so much. <laughs> and what else do we have? Oh we have her and she's cool too. She's like 
I got a little rose earring, <laughs> which I just thought was like adorable because they're like parts of our personality that we bring out through accessorizing that I didn't want to take away. Sure. You know what I yeah. mean? And yeah. like we do have our bodies, but they're just like these little things that accentuate like our inner personality, you know? So yeah. I didn't want to take that away from her. And she's cool. Like I said, if she doesn't sell within the next year I'm keeping her for myself. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I really do like I oh, love her great. body and she's got like these tiny little feet. She's so cute. <laughs> and so yeah. when when you when you when you're okay, the next doll that you make, is it already do you have something in your head before you start or is it while you're doing it? Like how does that take shape? It depends. I always say it's like if the spirit catches me. Yeah. You know, it's like sometimes there are moments where I wake up in the morning and I'm like, I know I have to make something and, and there's no plan. And then there are times where I'm really feeling like lately I've been feeling really emotional about motherhood and like what it means to like not be like to be a mother. It doesn't matter if you're like a biological mother or just to be like a presence that's yeah. um, that's matronly, right? And um, so I've been making a lot of birthing moms, a lot of like Madonna and child sure. and like working on like humongous pieces so like in those cases I'm like I do have dedicated time so I'm like this is going to be a mother and child but there's no there's no plan I just know that that's what it's going to be right yeah um, yeah and then there are other times where I'm like I'm just going to make something and then it turns out to be an amazing piece <laughs> right well it, it you know about 30 or oh, two minutes ago when, when we first brought up the dolls um, the way you were holding your doll was so motherly. Like it was, it was, I was holding the doll like this, and you had the doll in my motherly cradle. Yeah, <laughs> I make them, so uh, technically they're mother. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't know. I just think that, I mean, if I were painting or if I were making other things, I would still hold them in that way. Sure. Because I, I just... I'm a believer in like you you manifest things for yourself, right? So if you take good care of it, then it's gonna go to a caring home and it's gonna go to someone who cares about it just as much as you do. You yeah. Know? So that's great. Yeah. And who's the taller person? So on this is um, a piece that I made and she's called the mother. So just inspired by all of my my other multicolored ones, she's the shame mother. So right now I'm working on um, a show it's called shame mothers and monsters and it basically just explores what shame is what it means to be ashamed and like where our shame comes from and what that's all about you yeah. know um, and so she's part of the last stage which is the embracing and I basically made her just like large she's got like one very long arm so she can like embrace us all wow. and she's multicolored because I wanted to represent as many like different skin tones as possible yep. And um, she's basically an interactive piece, and people can come in and hug her. And I tell people, like, when no one's around, like, go up to it and tell her what you're ashamed of, you know, and like start that process. That's you know what yeah. I mean? Like, start that process and just say it out loud, like, I'm ashamed of my belly fat. <laughs> and then you're like, you go home and you're like, why did I tell her that? <laughs> You know, like, where did that shame come from? Like, you can start your process of healing. Oh, yeah, that's you know? unbelievable. That's great. You also have a famous suit. I have a famous suit. <laughs> can we talk about that's, that? Yes, we can talk about it, <laughs> okay. for sure. Um, so, yes, I have a famous suit, and it's a suit that is, like, my flesh tone. So it's a brown suit, and it's got dicks all over it, and it's called the dick suit. And basically... I created the dick suit in retaliation to all of these unsolicited dick pics that I've been getting. I got them like from 2016 to like 2019, it was just like dicks. Like I don't know what <laughs> happened. <laughs> when people got so bold and like rude to just like do that, right? But so I was starting to feel like alone in this, you know? I'm like, oh, is there something about me that like, like, no one just send me their dicks? Like what's that about? Um, I started making all the dicks and then I wanted a like proper way to portray them so I made a suit and I basically sewed all these handmade crochet dicks onto a crocheted bodysuit and I call it my dick suit and I basically I did an amazing show where at the March of Eras gallery where I wore my dick suit and I allowed people within one minute intervals to do anything they wanted to me 
in the suit and I would not, you know, I wouldn't do anything, say anything or move. And they just had, they can go to town. And, oh my God, uh, so, yeah. <laughs> okay, so lots of follow-up questions there. Yeah. So, <laughs> Can you talk about some of the interactions? That you had? Yeah, you know, it was interesting at first. It was very like respectful at first. You know, people would just go up and be like, "Oh, hello, Dick," and you <laughs> just like look at the dick like they never seen the dick before, and they just like you know. Um, but then the longer I stayed, and the more people realized that I really wasn't going to move or do anything, um, just the more intense it became. So like I had people like slapping me in the head with dicks and like wanking off the dicks and wow. just like you know doing all kinds of stuff like touching my body in places that you just you know you need consent generally for <laughs> you know and I found it overwhelming and also just um, necessary and interesting as a as a project for myself as oh, well sure. right because yep. I did have a safe space um, place that like uh, for 20 seconds I would go to a space where no one was allowed to touch me for those so I could collect myself but on top of the fact that this was like a acrylic wool <laughs> blend and like covered my face oh, and yeah. body, I was just like, and it was summer, oh, and I was in a gallery with air conditioning, but like, <laughs> um, so there was that, and just like the sheer like physical discomfort, but then also this like overwhelming feeling of like, I came into this space and I asked for this. And now I'm not enjoying this. Yeah. You know, people are in my face, they're in my personal space, and I'm asking for it. And when, like, a lot of questions popped up, like, when you give consent and there's actual discomfort, when can you say no? Like, in my opinion, you can say no anytime you want, yeah. right? But, like, I kind of, like, played with that in my head and just thinking, like, wow, like, this is crazy. There are many, probably a lot of situations where people don't say no. Once they've realized this isn't what they wanted, right. or what they signed up for. And another question is like, when given the opportunity, people will just really show who they are and show their toxicity and their um, their abuse. Yeah. You know, Jeez. it's intense. It's an intense thing. Humanity. Yeah. <laughs> so there's another area that I wanted to talk about. Um, you do a lot of community work. And so I'd love to talk about that and just sure. you can tell me a little bit about uh, what you've done in the past. Yeah, totally. Um, so yeah, I do a lot of crocheting for a lot of different things. So for me personally, I'm like, I'm crocheting for meditation. When I'm upset, I crochet. When I'm really happy, I crochet. And so why not like spread this to the world? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, I started a group, well, me and my friend Chimani Luru. We started a group called Acts of Kindness, AOK -okay for short. Mm -hmm. And basically, we would go around the city to different parks in the city every Sunday from one to four and just teach people to crochet for free. And um, the more we did it, the more we realized that people were really receptive to this. And also, we just like That's fantastic. created this like super calm environment. Yep. People were just so calm, you know? And um, that's when we realized like we could probably do this in other spaces to people who really need, you sure. know, like who are seeking this, right? Yeah. Um, so we did, some of my favorite workshops were, um, you know, kinky, kinky crafts. So we did like floggers and like really oh, wow. sexy crochet crafting with uh, Crafty Queers, which is a, um, a program that runs at Sketch. Mm -hmm. And it's for queer youth, right? To just come through, have a safe space, and just like be themselves and be happy with their sexuality, you yep. know? Um, we did crochet for anger management with a girls group um, with youth assisting youth, and that was really interesting doing that whole. We had a whole run for like a year with this, with these girls groups. How old was the age you ran? about 10 to 13 okay so just like prime puberty years oh, sure. you know and just being in that space and being like oh, wow like these kids first of all have a lot to think about like they're doing even with me like the gap isn't that intense it's like but it's pretty a lot has happened sure. since i was 13. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and i'm just like the things that i'm dealing with like dick pics and stuff like they're dealing with that I like on a regular <laughs> so i'm just like oh my god so we we got in there and made a lot of like hopefully a lot of positive changes you know 
and was able to just create groups where girls can come in and talk about their problems. Yeah. Because I think very often, especially for girls, they are told that the more you talk about your problems, like you're whiny or you're just complaining or you're sure. on your period, you know, and it's like, listen, I actually have, I have issues. <laughs> I need to talk to someone about it, you know? Um, and then we did my favorite one. Well, not my favorite, but one of the most like heartwarming ones was um, Mindful Crochet at the 519 Community Center. Oh, yes. And um, that one really took me by surprise because the amount of people that showed up consistently and improved and got better than we did, you know what I mean? And yeah. are doing their own thing now. And I'm just like, this is what it's for. Like, this is why I do this, you know? And so I think that it, it really brought together my art and the community aspect of it because I make people and I love people and then I talk to people and I work with them. I hear their issues, I hear what they're worried about, and then I make them at home. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and just think of all the crocheters now that you are let loose in, in, yeah. in the world now. That's fantastic. Yeah, I love it. I was like, I would love just like a whole citywide yarn dom. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just like everyone get together and do like some yarn collaboration. That would be so amazing. Have you ever done yarn bombing? We did a lot of yarn bombing at the beginning, um, but then I found out that it was like really bad for trees and stuff to do that, so I, I just felt like a horrible person. I was like, this tree looks so beautiful, and then someone was like, you know that makes it rot. And I'm like, oh, okay, cool. Um, but then we'd go around like put hats on statues and like do a lot of yes. make like hearts and yeah. give hearts out to the city. And, so, yeah, there's a lot of a lot of things you can do with yeah. with, with yarn bombing. Yeah. Um, so, is there anything that you want to talk about that we didn't cover? Anything you want to talk about that we didn't cover? Um, I want to talk about just one thing. That thing that I said in the beginning, where it was really hard to crochet, and then I, I actually had like an experience that drove me to. Yeah, I, I stayed away from that because I yeah. wasn't sure, but absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So I mean. To just be as, you know, blunt as possible, like, I experienced a very close death, right? Mm -hmm. And so, after that happened, I was like, what am I going to do <laughs> now that I don't have this presence in my life, right? right? And so that's how crochet came into my life, and it was, like, really difficult before to pick it up because of the difficulties. And something I wanted to say was that, like, as a teacher, I see a frustration in a lot of people in the yeah. beginning stages, and I just, like, don't give up on whatever journey that you're on. You know what I mean? Because, I don't know, when you're building foundations, that's the hardest part, mm -hmm. right? The foundation is the hardest part. You build off of a foundation, right? right? So, of course, the foundation is going to be difficult. But if you stick to it, you'll see where you falter. You can make new foundations, and then you can build from there. You know, it's never just like, well, it didn't work out, and that's too bad. You know, I, I really, I think most of what I'm trying to say with a lot of my art is like, Wherever you are on your journey, even if you've stopped working, just know that that's okay too. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're not different or weak or, you know, because you've decided to stop or that you decided that it's too hard or, you know, that's a normal part of who we are as people. Yeah. And what is more important is that you actually have support systems that are there to help you and surround yourself with a lot of love and light and then you'll eventually see your journey come to fruition, you know? And I think that's what's most important like in this life, like on our journey together, you know? Yeah, that's beautiful. That's it. But do you have any, do you have any heroes or inspirations for, for what you do? Do I have any heroes? Honestly, my inspiration just comes a lot from my mom. <laughs> to be honest, she's a huge supporter. Um, and although she's not 100% like on board with my art career, she's just like, oh, like, how's your hobby yeah, going? But... <laughs> I'm just like, thanks. But she was the inspiration for so many of these Yeah, <laughs> she was the inspiration for so many of these dolls. Like, yeah. she was the reason that like I made, actually, like, this is a doll that, was actually inspired by my mother like yeah. she's just got like a smirk on because she's just like whatever <laughs> you want to do <laughs> she's like whatever i said she's just like support a hundred percent yeah you know and awesome. i really do um carry those values with me like when my friends say like oh i'm gonna be like i'm like great 
Yeah. <laughs> you know? I hope that works out for you. Whatever you need, I will support you. And that's kind of what, you know, whatever her um, opinions are, she puts them aside because she sees that, like, I'm happy. Yeah. And I'm making a difference in the ways that make me happy. And so that's been pretty cool to have her support. Plus, she drives me everywhere. Because oh, I don't drive. <laughs> so I'm just like, <laughs> she drives me to all the shows. She just like, yeah. So she drives me around. And she, because, yeah, I don't drive. And that's been a huge thing. Um, where she's oh, yeah, like, maybe at the shows and whatnot. Yeah, like, at first when it was just little dolls, it was fine. But now it's like, larger than life dolls. And she's like, get this license. <laughs> just get it. <laughs> she's just like, this makes no sense. Um, but yeah, like I think I'm, I'm like I go to a lot of sh um, a lot of like openings and like shows and stuff, and I'm starting to understand the um, the importance of community, like the importance of art community and like yeah. like-minded thinkers, because you know that's when collaborations come up and that's when like ideas that you never knew you even agreed with, like you know. So I'm really inspired by a lot of my peers right now, like. Um, um, I like no name specifically, but like a lot of like the young black women identified artists right now. Like, actually, I will give some names. Like, Black Power Barbie is pretty bomb. Yeah, like, she's yeah. pretty cool. <laughs> um, we got Kersha Wright, who's like a multi, like multi dimensional fairy unicorn lady who's just perfect. Yeah. Um, and she really inspires me because. Like a lot of what um, she was doing at first was just painting, but now she's like, you don't have to be stuck in just one place, you know? Yeah. Which is something that I even learned about myself. I'm like, well, these dolls are cool, but they can be, like right now I'm thinking a lot about like doing stop motion animation and like doing a lot of like the stuff. huge. Yeah, yeah so there's like things. a lot of stuff yeah. that they could do. And I'm like, it'd be cool because then it would be even more accessible, right? Yeah. Like I can tell the story through video and don't have to worry about making like a thousand dollars to tell that story. You yep. Know? Fantastic. I, one thing I haven't shared with you is um, that you inspired me um, last year when I was thinking about putting something in, in a gallery um, and I told you about the project that I had, the three foot penis. Mm -hmm. Well, and, I, and part of it was the fact that I saw your stuff and it was in a gallery and um, and it was accepted like people because it was yeah. interesting to see so i don't know if i would have had the confidence to do that oh, if it wasn't so, for you. Nice. so so i wanted to share that with you <laughs> that's so sweet and that makes me so happy oh great <laughs> that makes me really really happy makes me tear up a little bit <laughs> anyway i just this has been fantastic yeah and thank you so much for sharing your story oh, thank and you sharing your dolls me. as well <laughs> thank you so much for having me it really makes me happy to know that you know we're out here, fiber people, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, we actually have a voice and things to say, and it should be accepted. Oh, absolutely. You know. So, yeah. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Thank you. So, thank you so much. Thanks, Kristen. Okay. And thanks, thanks, cabin boy, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Sweet. Okay. Oh, thank you so much.